what's all this commotion about? You hit 1000? That's such a broad notification, is it not? Check YouTube! Wait a minute. Oh damn, I did hit 1000 subscribers. What do people even do when they hit 1000 subscribers? I mean, some people do giveaways, some people do nothing. But what's the most simple thing I can do? Easy, I'll just check my comments. What the hell? It's just people telling me to use Linux. I guess I'll just check the next page. What the fuck? There's so much Linux! If these people really want a Linux video, a Linux video they'll get. Now explaining Linux from someone who doesn't know a lick of Linux is pretty stupid, so I had to do a little bit of research. Now to put it in shortly, Linux is basically any other operating system like Windows or Mac OS, but the catch is that it's open source. Now you may ask, why is it so important that it's open source? Well my friend, that's because people love modifying operating systems. And now that's where distros come in. A distro, short for distribution, is basically a version of Linux packaged with certain software, a specific desktop look, and tools chosen by whoever made it. Now for this video, we're gonna have to pick a distro. So let's look through this list here. Ah shit, I forgot I can't read. Now before we even install Linux, recently I got all of these computers from the dump and I've noticed some of them have USB 3.0 ports. So what I took from that is that some of these parts in these desktops are actually fairly new, so I went to go test some of them out. But before we do that, we need to clean them. Now that our computer is fully clean and dusted out, we can put in our 6 operating system hard drive and see what the specs look like. For some reason, upon starting up the computer, it decided to discheck every partition which almost took an hour. Why would it discheck now all of a sudden? And then when I decided to wait it all through, it gets stuck on an infinite loading screen. Nice. Eventually Windows 8 booted up as the default OS with this horrible ass design. But I immediately went to go check the specs and we have an i5-6500 which is a 4 core processor with 16 gigabytes of DDR4. With this type of hardware we could easily run Linux. But that reminds me of something. Let's pick our distro! With our options of Linux being a vast amount of distros, I'll have you guys guess between four. Alright, we have A. Linux Mint B. Linux Fedora C. Kali Linux or D, Ubuntu. Now cast your answer into the comments and let's see if you're right. After trying to figure out how to get Linux to boot up on my system, apparently all I had to do was switch the boot mode back to legacy. But then I had a problem where every time I tried to boot up onto my SSD, Windows Vista would pop up with a broken registry. So how did I fix this? I took out the SSD and plugged it into my computer, and I formatted it from there. Then I replugged it and tried to boot up Linux. But wait, 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 wait. Before you see the distro, let's reveal what the correct answer is. Drum roll, please. Linux Mint. Congratulations to all my winners out there. Let's install this operating system. Okay, now seeing the screen low-key confused me because I had no idea which one I was supposed to press. I'm honestly really used to Microsoft's install now button on their setups. Anyways, I clicked start Linux and I got this mumbo jumbo amount of text on my screen. What the hell is this even about? Anyways, Linux Mint finally starts up and I think I'm starting to like the desktop feel. Even though I haven't installed it yet, it just really feels like Windows. Anyways, enough babbling. Let's install this OS. Just like that, Linux Mint is finally installed. Surprisingly, Linux Mint actually comes with Firefox pre-installed. In which I'm pretty surprised because Firefox has always been the go-to browser for me. Unfortunately though, I'm not sponsored by Firefox, I just think their browser is really good. Anywho, my first thought was to see if I could get Steam on Linux, in which it was actually pretty simple. And what I mean by simple is copy and pasting a bunch of text into the terminal. After waiting 20 minutes for Steam to install through the terminal, I immediately rushed to see if Peggle could even install. And to my surprise, it did. Even better, it has sound drivers. Now the next game I wanted to try out was Deltarune. Now I wasn't too sure if Deltarune would actually work on Linux, but surprisingly it did. I know this game isn't too hardware demanding, but even without a GPU, it ran pretty smooth. Now throughout this fight, I did feel a little bit of a delay on the controls, but other than that, it felt pretty smooth. Also, I didn't even get to kill this motherfucker. he just decided the fight was over. By the way, if you're wondering how I'm getting these games to run on Linux, Steam has a compatibility layer called Proton, which tricks Windows games into thinking they're running on Windows, but they're running on Linux. Now another game I wanted to test out was Hotline 
behind Miami. This game is a classic. Also, this game isn't too graphic heavy, so it should run pretty okay. And just like that, why the hell is it in Russian? Anyway, let's just get into the gameplay. Honestly, I think Hotline Miami is probably one of the first games that made me rage so hard, especially on a PS Vita. If you know how it feels to control a character with these flimsy ass thumbsticks, then you'll know the struggle. Now the next game I wanted to try out was Call of Duty World at War. Now one of the biggest reasons why I wanted to test out this game is because it's more graphic heavy than the others. I also wanted to see how this game would hold up against the 6th gen i5. In which, if you didn't know, computers without a GPU will always rely on the CPU's built-in graphics chip. But not every integrated graphics on a CPU will run as smoothly as a GPU. But in this case, even a more graphic heavy game like this actually ran pretty smooth for me. But now I think that's enough of gaming. Let's see if we can get some apps to work. Now the first app I wanted to install was Discord, and thankfully enough, it was way easier than installing Steam and typing a bunch of code into the terminal. And honestly, there's not too much of a difference with Discord on Linux compared to Windows. Also, shoutouts to these people for responding on time. Now the next app on Oblock is Spotify. Though unfortunately, installing Spotify through the terminal was so fucking tedious, I absolutely hated it. But through some trial and error, I finally got Spotify to work. Also, something I've never realized is that Linux has a store for all these apps and that I've been doing it wrong this entire time. Now, the two apps I decided to download and test out is VLC and FileZilla. For FileZilla, I wanted to test out if I can transfer a few files between my PS Vita and the computer. And that was as simple as dragging one file from a folder to the other. Now, for VLC, actually, I can't say much. All this thing does is play videos and music. Now in order to host a LAN server on Linux, you're gonna have to use Python. And thankfully most distros already come pre-installed with Python. So now the first step is to establish where exactly you're hosting your files. This is done with the command cd and then your directory. After that, all you really have to do is set up a port and that's it. Just type in your private IP with the port on a browser and boom, your directory is right there. With that over, I think it's safe to say that we can wrap up Linux and start our Q&A. Welcome everyone, without wasting any time, let's get right into our questions. What's your favorite Windows generation? Honestly, I'd have to say around the era between Windows Vista and 7. Where are you from? Well, I was born in America, but I am Turkish. What was your inspiration in making your channel? Well, to be honest, I don't really know myself, but I guess it's to make tech videos. What are some changes you'd make to Windows 10 or 11 to make it better? I'd say getting rid of all the bloatware and spyware. Why do you like Peggle so much? Well, obviously it's because it's such a sophisticated game that I absolutely love it. Will you ever build a PC with all the components you have lying around? Honestly, I plan to at one point, but most of my parts right now are incompatible. Will you try to fix your upload schedule? I hope you know these videos are not easy to make. Which side are you on? Hmm, I'd say Team Pepsi. How did you get your mascot? Well, over time, my character has gone through some questionable designs, but at one point, I came to one design and decided to draw it that way only. And now for our last question, are you a furry? Yes. Anyways, I think that's enough of answering questions. Before this video ends, I want to say thank you to RDH for recommending me the distro used in this video. If you want to help out in future videos, please join the Discord server. With that out of the way, I'll see you guys next time.